In this video, I will show you how to implement Google Tag Manager on a Wix website. Hey, my name is Julius and this is Analytics Mania, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. Wix is a very popular website builder that allows you to launch a website within hours or minutes. While there are definitely some nuances, you can still have at least a mediocre setup with Google Tag Manager on a Wix website. And in this video, I will show you exactly how to do that. By the way, I also have a blog post that teaches how to implement Google Tag Manager on a Wix website. So if you want to learn some additional tips, uh, check the links below the video. All right, so let's dive in. Here I am on a demo website of Wix where I'm going to implement Google Tag Manager. In order to be able to implement Google Tag Manager, your website must be on a premium plan because Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, and other integrations require you to have a connected domain. I mean, your website must be hosted on your own domain and you can do that only by having a premium plan. As far as I know, any premium plan will work, at least as of the moment of recording this video, but just need to keep in mind that you will not be able to add Google Tag Manager if you are on a free plan of Wix. So I have already done that. I am on a premium plan and I have connected a custom domain right here. And we see that this domain is connected. It is a primary and the website is live. If you're not sure where to find the domains, I mean, where, where to connect the domains, you need to go to the settings of your website, then click settings and then choose domains and you will be able to find the domain and add your own domain right here. Once you do that, then you will need to stay in those very same settings and find the section that is called tracking tools. Or in some places, I remember that the name is analytics and tracking or something like that. So you should keep looking for something that is related to tracking or analytics. When you click it, then you need to choose the tool that you want to integrate. If you're thinking that you should choose Google Tag Manager right here, don't do that. Also, don't choose Google Tag Manager right here. Even though it looks uh, obvious that this is the option, unfortunately, the built-in Google Tag Manager integration in Wix is terrible. Maybe in the future they will fix some bugs, but right now it is so full of problems that your tracking will probably break multiple times on a page. That is why you should not choose the Google Tag Manager integration right here. Instead, go with the custom option right here. But once again, maybe in the future they will fix this, but right now, at least as of the moment of recording this video, don't do that. Then when you choose custom integration, you should go to Google Tag Manager, click on the container ID and copy this entire first code right here. Then paste the code, set it to fire on all pages, load it once ahead and click apply. Then let's check whether Google Tag Manager is implemented properly. Go to Google Tag Manager, enable preview and debug mode, then the orange banner should appear. If you cannot see the orange banner, this means that the preview mode will not work for you. And this is very important. So if you are facing issues like this, I mean that you are not seeing the orange banner, I will post a link below the video where you can find some tips on how to troubleshoot this issue. But most likely your browser is blocking third party cookies or maybe some extension, some plugin on your browser is doing that. So once you enable the preview and debug mode, you should go to the website and click refresh, refresh the page, and then you will see that the preview mode has appeared. So this means that Google Tag Manager is implemented properly. Right now we are seeing three events, which is container loaded, DOM ready, and window loaded. These are three standard events that you will find in every container. Now let's actually start tracking some interactions on a page. The most common one is to track page views. And the most common tool where those page views are sent is Google Analytics. So let's go to Google Tag Manager and create a new tag. Click tags, then click new, tag configuration, universal analytics, page view, and choose the GA settings variable. So this variable will contain settings like, you know, your Google Analytics account ID and so on. I mean, not account ID, the property ID, but still. If you don't have any GA settings variable right now, you should click new variable and then enter your tracking ID right here. So this is where you need to enter the ID of your Google Analytics. So go to Google Analytics, admin. So I mean that little gear icon right here, tracking info, tracking code, and then copy the code right here. So just this ID and paste it right here. Then let's name the variable. Save the variable 
and then set the triggering to all pages. So this means that this tag will fire on all pages of the website where Google Tag Manager is implemented. But since we have implemented Google Tag Manager container code on all pages, so we expect that all pages is actually all pages. Then let's name the tag. Save the tag and let's test whether it is working properly. To do that, you will need to refresh the preview mode first, then go to the website, refresh it, and you will see that your tag has fired on container loaded event. Because all pages trigger means that every time a container loaded event appears right here, it will then activate your tag. So this is a good thing. Then let's go to Google Analytics real time reports and check whether the data was actually properly received by Google Analytics. So go to GA, real time and overview. And you should see your page view right here. So we are now in the motivational reading. I can also go to other pages and I should probably expect other page views to appear. But once I click it, actually what happens is that no other page view appears. In fact, if I go to this part, this part, let's say this, this and so on, what you will see is that these page views are not displayed. This is happening because of a technological thing called single page application. So, or let's say single page website is also with the name. The reason why this happens is because of the way how Wix websites work. Even though you think that you're actually navigating between pages and the URL is changing, the actual page does not reload. This means that things like tracking codes and so on, they are loaded just once. And then when you keep moving from one section to another, the content is dynamically changed, but the actual page does not reload. Therefore, things like container loaded event happens only once, unless of course, I completely refresh the page. If I completely do that, then we see that the page and the preview mode also has completely reloaded and that a new page view is visible right here. But of course, visitors will not be artificially reloading your page just so you could see some page views in your analytics. Nobody does that. Therefore, we need to somehow be able to track these page views ourselves. Now, if you have no experience with single page applications, what you could actually check is whether the URL changes when you navigate from one page to another. So for example, right now I am on a homepage, so nothing is after slash. Let's, I mean, after the domain, but if I go, let's say to blog, we see that slash blog appeared. If I go to services, we see that slash services appeared. So that is actually good news. So the URL is changing. And Google Tag Manager luckily has a built-in functionality to track these URL changes and make them as triggering conditions. And you can do that with a trigger called history change. So you need to go to Google Tag Manager, then click new, trigger configuration, and then click history change. Now keep all the history changes enabled like this and let's name the trigger. Once you create this trigger, click refresh, then refresh the website and let's see what happens. So we see that the page has reloaded, our tag has fired, the page view is right here. Now let's try to click other menu items and navigate between pages. Click this one, we see some history, we click this one, we see some history. This one, we see some history. So that is a good thing. However, there are some problems as well. First of all, we see that the history events happen twice per click. So for example, if I go to home, you will see that two new history events have appeared. And this is not a good thing because if we use history events as condition to fire the page view tag, we will be counting two page views per actually one page view. And this is not a good thing. So what we need to do is that we need to somehow make this trigger more precise. And even though we see two events, we will need to fire our page view tag only once. So let's check what kind of data can we use of this um, trigger to make sure that we will be firing the tag only once. First of all, let's go to Google Tag Manager, variables, and in the built-in variable section, click configure, then scroll down and enable all history change variables right here. So history fragment, all history fragment and so on. When you do that and when this loading saving disappears, refresh the preview mode, then go back to the website and refresh it once again. Now let's see what happens. I mean, speaking of history events, nothing will change. So 
I click here, I click here, and we see two events every one click. So if we go and choose the first history event in the preview mode, then go to variables, we should see that history source is called replace state. But in case of the second event that happens on the same page view, we see the push state. So what we could do in this case is that we could just configure our history change trigger to fire tags only, let's say, if the history source is push state. That way, we will ignore the replace state right here. So let's do that. Let's go to Google Tag Manager, go to triggers, and let's update our history change trigger. So right now it is firing on all history changes. We want it to fire on a history source and is push state. Let's say equals to push state. Let's rename the trigger as well. And after you have saved the trigger, then go to tags and let's add another trigger to this page view tag. So right now what we will do is that we will make sure that this tag fires on two occasions. One is the initial page load and the other occasion is the history change trigger when the history source is push state. So in triggering, click on the pencil icon, then click this plus icon and add the second trigger right here. So what will happen is that if this occurs on a page or history change occurs on a page, you can see that or right here, this means that our page view will fire. I mean, the page view tag will send the data to Google Analytics. So refresh the preview mode right here. Always refresh the preview mode first, then go to the website and let's see what is happening. Right now we see the container loaded event, which is also known as the page view event. On it, our tag has fired. Then if we go to blog, if we go to contact, if we go to services, you will continue seeing two history events on every kind of like a page view. So that's not a problem, but what important is that our tag will fire only on the second history change because the first history event is using the replace state and the second one is using push state. And in our case, the trigger will fire tag only on the push state. So even though you see six history events right here, our page view tag will fire only on every second event of history right here. So didn't fire, fired, didn't fire, fired, didn't fire, fired. So we see three page views. And if we go to Google Analytics, we will also see three page views right here. So now we have properly implemented the page view tracking both on the initial page load, but also when the visitors are navigating your website and go from one section to another, even when the page actually does not reload. So as I've mentioned in the beginning of this video, there are some nuances in Wix that you need to be aware of, but it is still possible to track things like page views. Also, it's possible to track clicks and other events. To keep this video short, I will not explain how to track clicks or other interactions, but I will post several links below this video to give you more ideas. What can you track and actually you can follow those tutorials to, uh, to implement those events. Oh, and also one more thing. Last but not least, when you make sure that your changes are working, you need to submit your changes right here by clicking the submit and then giving some name to this version and then clicking publish right here. Okay, so now you know how to implement Google Tag Manager on a Wix website. What other useful things would you like to track on a Wix website? Let me know in the comments. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up below the video. Also, consider subscribing. My name is Julius. This is Analytics Mania and I'll see you in the next video.